welcome to Stories with Corey. What's the weather like over there? Here, it's pretty cloudy, but it hasn't been raining today. It was raining a lot yesterday. And of course, because it's fall in the northern hemisphere, it's heading towards colder weather, lots of wind, sometimes rain, pretty cloudy. But, you know, I love the fall. It's my favorite time of year. The leaves fall down and uh, just all sorts of weather occurrences that are just my favorite. It's the best temperature. It's between summer and winter, so it's not too hot and it's not too cold. And that's what I like best about that. I do want to let you guys know something before I begin reading stories and singing songs with you. And that is, I often have difficulty locating enough books to read for the themes that I wish to uh, use in my videos. So I may have a minimum of two books, but oftentimes at least four. I do try that. So I have two books today, and one of them's in Norwegian, and then of course we have three songs, so it's going to be a little shorter, but we will try to make it work. Instead of starting with a book, this time we're going to start with a song. And you grown-ups will probably recognize this song from the popular Disney film, Winnie the Pooh. And it goes, it's the little black rain cloud, and it goes like this. I'm just a little black rain cloud hovering under the honey tree. I'm just a little black rain cloud, pay no attention to little me. Oh, everyone knows that a rain cloud never eats honey, no, not a nip. I'm just floating around over the ground, wondering where I will drip. I'm going to begin with a Norwegian book this time instead of an English book. It is written by an American author, I believe. It's been translated to Norwegian, and some of you may recognize this little guy. Do you know who this is? Can you guess from the title or the picture? That's right, it's Walter the Farting Dog. Yes, get your jokes out now, folks, because I'm going to be reading about Walter the Farting Dog. And this says, Prumpehunden, which means farting dog, Walter, to the skies or to the heavens. He knows it's heavens. And it's by William Cotswinkle, Glenn Murray, and Elizabeth Gundy. Now remember, bear with me because my Norwegian isn't perfect. Til alla som en gång i livet har följt. Let me try that again. Til alla som en gång i livet har följt sig misskänt eller misförstått. Poor Walter. Oh, let me move the camera a little bit. This way, perhaps. There, now you can see the whole book. Professor Compressor Banket Poloren. Jeg har forstått det slik at hunden deres har en fisefeil. Den har ikke noen feil, sa Betty og Billy. Å, jo da, gjett om den her, ropte far. Så bare kom inn. Jeg har vet min liv til studiet av anmale gasser, sa professor Kompressor. Han undersøkte, undersøkte Walter, klemt ham forsiktig på magen. Men pass deg, så, så sa far. Han plir og prompe når gjør, noen gjør det der. Han fisser nok ikke på mig. Gjør det vel, Walter? Så professor Kompressor. Men Walter prompet. O oh, professor Kompressor ramlet bak over. Han vaivet med fiskgassmåleren sin. Det kom massiv, frumpte han. Det er det højest jeg noen gang har målt. For et bemerkelseverdig dyr. <laughs> that is a mouthful. Ah, Walter likte, likte å bli kaldt. Bemerkelsverdig. 
<laughs> I don't know what that word is, so I'm having trouble pronouncing it. Dar for licked the ham professor compressor, or schlicked ham po handen. Hunden, excuse me. Du är en god hund, Walter, så professor compressor, och jag ska hjälpa dig. Han klappet och klämt lite på Walters magen igen. Det är för dig hälsen, din son, förorsaker disse våldsam fjärtorna. Men vi syns icke det gör nå, sa Bette och Billy. Jo då, det gör vi, sa mor. Efter många år studier har jag funnit fram till denna uppskriften, sa professor Kompressor. Kremtuber och pulverpåse vrimlet upp från lommorna hans. Samtidigt satte han kontakten i maskin som blinket och lyste. Mix allt samman i den prompetuten min och serva det ni blandet tre gånger dagligt. Vi är så tanknämlig, sa mor. Så tre gånger om dagen hällde mor den specialblandningen i prompetuten. Fisen hans lukte inte så varst längre, sa Billy optimistisk. Det stinker varre än någon gång, sa far. Sa far. Faren din har rätt, sa mor. Den kvällen bestämde far sig för att mixa blandningen själv. Han så tänkt som på alla pulverpåsarna. Mer av denna, bestämte far, bestämte han. Sorry, the book's getting a little heavy. Mindre av den där och en hel haug mer av den där borta. Far snuste på den nya blandningen och smilte stolt. Nå beginner det och ligna nu. Smakar ganska gott också, sa Walter till sig själv. Och spiste trå fast var en nästa dag. Ooh, I have to rest my arm a little. That book is big. <laughs> det virker, ropte mor. Det luktar rent och friskt här igen. Hurra, sa Betty. Walter var förnöjd, han också. Alla smilta. Ingen lopp och jämte sig när han kom in i stue. Far gav hon till och med en klem. Men det ingen visste var att långsam och säker salma det sig gas in i Walter. Och mer och mer blev det av den... Vi ska begynna och bli fight, så far. Men det var inte fett. Det var fiss. Massa visa prump som väntat på att bli satt fri. Kom- Professor Compressors mixture av fars expertise var i förd med att förvandla Walter till en gasballong. Let me hold the picture up so you guys can see. Walter is floating. <sighs> en kväll gjorde han ett höjt bix över stolen till far. Kämpa hopp, Walter, sa Billy. Men det var varken bix eller hopp. Det var fisigas. Walter got a bad mix from Professor Compressor's special formula by dad, and now he's floating. Nästa kväll satt Billy och Betty på rummet sitt och gjorde läxor. Billy, sa Betty, skicka vinduet, ut av vinduet. Billy och Betty hoppade ut av huset. Walter svedde över tränen. Kom ner, Walter, ropte Betty. Men Walter grejde icke och kom med ned. Uh-oh, Walter can't come back. Han svedde och in över byen. Litt av en utsikt, sa han till sig själv. 
er vindupust blåste han helt til den andra kanten av byen. Dette begynner å bli alvorlig, sa Walter. He's going all over town. <laughs> Let's try to get this in the picture. Han visste at problemet var gas, og han visste at løsning var å prompe. Han trykket. Han klemte sig på magen med pottene. Han kroket sig sammen. Ingenting. Hele natten svede han videre. Da morgen kom, han har himmelhøyt over alt og alle. Mamma, sa den lille pikken, se på den rare ballongen. Det har slitt sig, sa pikkens mor. Den vil aldrig få tak på igen. Oh my. Walter svede i flere dager. Han duvet over grønne bakker og blå elver. Han seilte over skiskrappere og bondegårder. Han fløy gjennom regn og mørke. Han kjente sig ensom og kaldt. Han drev de vinden førte han. Plutselig vokste vinden i strikke, og han var ikke alene lenger. Luften rundt ham var full av bite små flaggrendene og frossende vinger. Like I said, you guys have to bear with my pronunciation. I'm sure those of you who speak Norwegian are laughing. Millioner av sommerfulger var fanget av den iskalde vinden. De har vært på vei til vinterhjemmet sitt da stormen overrasket dem. Stakkars sommerfulger så valgte til seg selv. Vinden tvang dem ned mot en islagt innsjø. Jeg må hjelpe dem, tenkte Walter. I'm gonna set this down a little so I can rest my arm. Han visste at han hadde det satt i seg, hvis han bare kunne få det ut. Han pestet. Han stønnet. Han presset. Han så inn i de bitte små insektfjesene. Det var nå eller aldri. Oh boy, it's now or never. He's got to try and fart to save the butterflies. Og så dundre fissen seg løs. En eksplosjon av varmt gass stanset sommerfullene i fallet. Den smelte isen på vingene deres. Den bar dem helt i den andre siden av fjellet, dit hvor solen enda skynte. Den landet i en full av blomster. Og en skogvåte stå i vaktornet sitt og snakket i wakitaki. Jeg tror disse sommerfølene vi greier seg fint. He thinks the butterflies are safe because Walter's gas melted their wings and let them fly home. Walter var nå tom for fis og strittet mot bakken som en sluknet raket. Oops, let me get the picture where you guys can see. Han plasket redd ned inn i stor dam og brukte hundre krål for å komme seg inn på land. Han riste seg tur. Så snuste han opp i luften, snudde seg helt rundt og begynte på den lange veien igjen. Men han hadde bare gått en lite stikke da skogvokteren kjørte opp på siden av ham med terrengbilen sin. Liste til å sitte på, superdog? He thinks Walter's a superdog. Make sure I'm getting the right page here. Det er noen som har sendt oss til en dyr pakke. Så mor sa mor da hun så 
ut av vinduet. Det är inte några pake, ropte Billy. Det är Walter. Där kan det se, sa far. Jag så ju att han vill finna vägen igen. Åh, Walter, sa Betty. Vi är så glada för att du är här igen. Ika halvparten så glad som vi är. Ah, så var budna. They're happy to have him home. And it says, Superdog Rather Summerfuller, which means Superdog Save the Butterflies, I think. <laughs> okay, so we've sung about the rain. We read a book about a dog flying around in the wind. And now we're going to sing You Are My Sunshine. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Our second book is a picture book. And usually that means that it's a picture book that has a few sentences on each page. But this particular picture book is just pictures, so you yourself have to tell the story. Uh, this one's called Once Upon a Snowstorm by Richard Johnson. Uh, but there are also the Carl the Dog books that you have a similar premise. You see the pictures and you tell the story yourself. So... Let's check this one out. You can see here, there's a little boy in the window looking outside on a cold winter's day, and Dad is chopping firewood. The little boy is coloring, drawing pictures on the floor, while Dad reads a newspaper. And there's pictures of Mom on the wall, and there's hunting trophies on the wall and a nice big fire going. But the boy is hungry and they don't have any food. So dad dresses the boy up and gets ready to go outside into the winter storm to hunt for some food. That's a big storm. And if you can see, if you look closely, there are deer in the snowflakes. Some of the big fat snowflakes in the storm are deer, and it looks like there's a fox, and several other animals. Let's see if I can turn the page. The boy is enjoying the snow. Maybe he sees the shapes too. But the snow gets harder and harder and he loses his dad's hand. And so he starts to call for his father, but they get separated. And he is suddenly all alone in the snowstorm. The boy is cold and lost, and oops, he slips and slides down a hill. He looks and he finds a big, dark cave. And there are several footprints leading to and from the cave. He goes into the cave and lays down and falls asleep. And he dreams of the animals that you can see in the constellations at night. There's thinking that's cancer, it's a crab, there's a bird, there's a deer, there's a fox, and a bear. When he wakes up, he sees that he's not alone in the cave. He's surrounded by all the woodland creatures. There's a bear, and a badger, and a wild pig, and foxes, and chipmunks, and squirrels, and rabbits, and deer, and an owl, and what is that, a raccoon? Yes, mice, it's a lot of animals. 
and that big bear is the biggest of all. They all look at each other. They all look surprised. Some of them look scared. Some of them look curious. And one of them looks suspicious. boy kind of waves high nervously and the bear asks him are you lost and do you have anything to eat the boy has let me get the picture in this in the video there we go the boy offers a sweet to the bear and the bear likes it so the bear shows the boy where he can find fresh water to drink and the boy shares fruits and berries and nuts with the animals and they dance and they have a grand time together even the squirrel is juggling the boy and the bear paint the caves together they have a great time but then the boy remembers painting his father and he paints him holding hands with his with him and they're outside the cabin and the boy gets sad and wants to go home so he hops on the bear's back and they run back home he waves goodbye to the rest of his animal friends as they run In the distance, far away, they see his cabin. So they cross over a stream and go through the big forest and climb the hill. And the bear waits at the top of the hill while the boy runs to his father who's calling for him. Ah, safe at last, back home with Dad. But the bear wants to make sure he's okay. A bear, says Dad, and gets ready to shoot him. No, don't shoot, says the boy. He saved me. He saved you. Well then. He's welcome at our house anytime. And so are all of his animal friends. Now, the neat thing about picture books like these is you can read them as often as you like and the story can be a little different each time you read it. You notice different things each time if you look at the pictures closely and even telling it to someone new makes the story new. Having someone else tell the story makes it new. These kind of books are great for children who don't know how to read yet, but they like hearing the reassuring sound of your voice and they see you reading a book and they'll start to imitate you sure enough. So uh, here we are at the last song. It's going to be in Norwegian and I'm not a hundred percent sure of the melody. It's actually from Winnie the Pooh as well, but in Norway, they call Winnie the Pooh Ole Brum, and this song is a song that he sings about the snow, and it's called De Snø, De Snø, Tiddly Boom. <laughs> it kind of goes like this. De Snø, De Snø, Tiddly Boom, De Yo, De De Yo, Tiddly Boom, No Snare Me, Ja Mer and Fur, Tiddly Boom, Mo Uttemai Tu. I'll try the second verse. So kalte ar tiddly boom, yai shana de har tiddly boom, shana de po mina tur tiddly boom mahutumai tu. So that's all I've got for story time today. Uh, as ever, you can find a link below to free song sheets and handouts. I recommend you check them out every so often. Just before you watch an episode, see if there's a new. Uh, handout that will go with the story time. It always matches the title of the video, so you guys can check those out for free and print them out at home. 
Uh, you know, it's hard to find books in the same theme here. I am having interlibrary loans, but it's not really easy. I live in Norway. I'm used to uh, the American uh, interlibrary loan system, and I'm used to finding books in English and Spanish, not so much in Norwegian, so I do my best. Uh, story times may be sporadic, but they will happen on a Sunday. Excuse me. So check on a Sunday and see if I've posted a link to the latest video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you, Gracias.